Hello everyone, I'm Farmer Sim and welcome to the third installment of my guide to course play. So in this episode I am going to show you how to create a custom field, I'm going to show you how to save courses and a bit later on we are going to jump maps and I'm going to show you how to run multiple machines. Now initially regarding the custom courses, the custom fields, uh, what better map to start on than what is, in my opinion, the, the OG, the original uh, empty map or almost empty map, uh, No Man's Land by Alien Jim. So, let's get right into it. Okay, so, custom fields. It's a pretty straightforward job to do this, to be honest. It's uh, it's not too difficult whatsoever. Um, now, you don't necessarily need to have an implement on the back of a tractor to record a custom field. You can do it in a car if you wanted to. You could do it in a lorry. You could do it in any of the vehicles on the map, if, on, in the game, sorry, if I'm honest. Um, but for the purposes of being able to do two jobs with one, um, that's why I have a subsoiler attached to the back of this tractor. Now, obviously, as we all know, if you want to create a field in the game from from nothing on just a blank piece of land you will need either a plow or a subsoiler there is a mod that exists that allows you to use a cultivator i think it's quite simply called allow cultivator create fields or something like that it is available on the mod hub uh, but obviously for the purposes of this demonstration i am going to be using this uh, rather simple and relatively tight knit uh, subsoiler now again a, another point of personal preference when it comes to creating fields you now because you can use plows you, obviously you can if you wanted to you could use one of the one of the original uh, style of plows the, the the offset ones uh, that kind of stick out to the side of the tractor whether that's the left or the right um i've always found that it can, it can be a bit awkward to create a field with those because they don't leave a perfect line in the ground they obviously that they're, they're, they're an offset shape and they're a they don't leave a square shape behind the vehicle you're using if that makes any sense um so yeah, so if if you're gonna do it like this where you where you're recording a, a course and you want to create the field as you go, if you want to have as much control as possible over the, the definition of the field edge, I would heartily recommend uh a small and, and very and relatively short uh implement such as this one. Anything that sticks out far from the back of the tractor, even if it is a square plow but it's quite long and it's say, say it's stuck out to about here from the back of the tractor, as you're turning a corner, whether that's a smooth corner or if you're trying to create a sharp corner, um as you're turning your vehicle, the back of the the, the, the furthest back most part of the plow is going to turn out wider than the the line of the vehicle, if you know what I mean. So yeah, if you want to have as much control as possible use something like this that sits as close as possible to the back edge of the back end of the tractor the rear uh, axle right anyway so let's jump in the vehicle let's bring up our heads up display now the first thing of course you're going to want to do is uh, make sure that you have allow create fields on as you know we are uh, we have a completely blank canvas bit of land here so we want to create a field so there we go allow create fields let's bring up the heads up display for course play now this vehicle has not had any course play courses loaded into it so we now have a, a completely blank heads up display here now the only button that we have in front of us is the, this round button here that is record so very simply let's hit record and as you will see above the tractor we have the first waypoint that has appeared and we also have uh, the the familiar start symbol that we see on our all of our course play courses when we plot them so that's that so let's start up the vehicle Let's lower the subsoiler down. There we go. Right. Now, this subsoiler, I think, has a, a, a top speed. You can run it with a, a 7 miles an hour, I think, top speed. If you are recording a course without any implements on and just using an empty vehicle, essentially, again, another point of preference, but I would, I would recommend this, essentially, just because, it, again, it gives you a bit more control. Um... And, it de and also depending on what you use to steer your tractor. I use a control pad, it's a PS4 control pad. So when you're steering and you're wanting to make uh, smooth corners, it's quite easy to do with a control pad because you've got the toggles. I can appreciate it might be a bit more difficult to do that just using the, uh, the A and D buttons on your keyboard. But, forgive me, what I'm trying to say is I would recommend limiting the speed of your tractor. So dial down the the cruise control for example to like 10 miles an hour um and then run the 
run at least the outer edge of the course at most 10 miles an hour just so that the vehicle doesn't travel too fast um, and make a mistake if you know what I mean because sometimes if you you know if, if you're going quite fast and you steer and you get the, and you it steers a bit too sharply from one side to the other you might get a bit of wobble and you know create the edge of the field um, that isn't quite as, as, as defined and as nice if, if uh, that you'd like does that make any sense I hope it hope it does anyway right so but as I say we're not going to have that problem with this because the uh, tool is limited to I think it's about seven miles an hour so let's rock and roll let's start edging forward now I'm just going to create a, a relatively straightforward nice round shape I said it was limited to seven miles an hour it struck there we go come on that's it getting the right gear So, but yeah, if you if you can if you can appreciate if I had one of those big ploughs on the back and it was hanging off the back by you know ten feet or so, and then you start turning a corner like that, the edge of the field that we have on the left hand side wouldn't be as neat and tidy as that because the plough would be sticking out much further. Um, and if that's not what you wanted, you'd you'd then have to finish what you're doing here, and then jump into the uh, construction mode and do a bit of uh, painting and landscaping work just to uh, to get rid of it. So. But yeah, essentially, what we're doing here, we are recording the boundary of the field. And as I say, it's just it's just nice to have that control over the uh, over the edge of the field. If we had obstacles around us, if we had fences and trees and stuff like that, it's uh, I've just found it much more preferential to to use a shorter uh, square shaped subsoiler. So, what we want to do now, you want to make sure, as best as you can, that when we when we come round to meet the start point, you need to try your best to align the, the, the line we're making now as straight as possible with the start point. Because I have found that if you uh, if you don't line them up evenly when the when when the when the field is created and the edge of the boundary is created, it can go a bit funny, essentially. So I'm going to try my very best. There we go. Oh, ooh, almost perfect. There we go. Yeah, that'll do for me. That will do. Okay, so we've created the boundary of a field. So what we want to do now is essentially hit the record button again, which will stop the recording. There we go. And you are met with this message. Do you want to save the recorded course as custom field CP1? Yes, we do. There we go. So now we have created the boundary of a field. Now, the in the inner section of the field hasn't been created yet. That's still... Uh, obviously, that needs to be ploughed under. So what I think we'll do just for safety now, we'll lift the, lift the subsoiler up. Now, we need to jump into the menus now. Oh, forgive me. There we go. Okay, so in the active workers menu... We can now see in the PDA here, you can now see that the edge of the field here that we have created. So if you if you use your mouse and click on the CP1 wording in the center of the field, we now bring up a couple of options at the bottom here. We can delete the custom field. So if you weren't happy with it and you wanted to do it again, you can simply delete it and that will disappear and you're free to go again. We can rename it, anything you want. So very imaginative, imaginatively here, we are going to call this Field one, nice and simple. Okay, now there is also an option here for to edit the custom field. So I'm going to very quickly show show you what uh, what you can do with that. So when you click on edit custom field, you're brought into the course editor, quite simply. So first and foremost, the basic mode. If you click on that, in the top left corner here, you have an option to drag and drop a waypoint with the mouse. So using your mouse, you you see the white uh, white circle on the ground that uh, follows your mouse. If you bring that underneath each waypoint, you can see the waypoints going from yellow to blue. When it turns blue, it means you've, you've caught it essentially. So holding down the left mouse button on that waypoint, you are now free to move that anywhere you want. So you can you can really fine tune the the shape of the field that you just created. Uh, for what you know, if you if you wanted to bend it round an obstacle that's here that wasn't quite easy to do when you were recording the field you, you can essentially do this and customize it 
to, the, to your exact specifications, essentially, depending on what map you're on and what your uh, what shape you want it to be. That's essentially that for the, the basic mode. In the advanced mode, there's a couple of other uh, extra bits to, to insert a waypoint after the selected waypoint or insert a waypoint before the selected waypoint. So if I, again, using this uh, this piece of waypoint, this waypoint here, if I hover the mouse uh, cursor underneath that waypoint and I press X from the top left, I will insert a waypoint after the one that we are selected. So there you go. As you can see, one has appeared there. Now if I bring this back here and insert a waypoint before the selected waypoint, there we go. It has done exactly that. And again, it just adds a bit more uh, customization to your ability to shape the edge of the field if that makes any sense so that's essentially that nice and straightforward just a, a, another extra super bit of uh, customization but we can come out of this now right so the next thing we want to do to create the field as a whole field we now want to run the plow in the whole thing but we can do but course play can do that so that's what we're going to do course play has now recognized will now recognize this as the outer boundary of a field so what we shall do now we shall jump into the menus and we will create a custom field plotting in this sh in this field so jumping into the active workers menu we now want to go to create job uh, select course play field work there in the top right hand corner now as you can see as we're used to now course play has defined the outer edge of the the piece of ground that we've just created now we want to simply go straight into the open close course generator now obviously things should be relatively familiar here we have a work with the four meters we have one tool we're going to run two headlands on this one we're going to start work on the headland because this is just a, just for the purposes of creating the field Headland corner smooth. Yep, we're going to keep everything as it is. Keep the headland overlap at 7%. We don't need to worry pretty much about anything. We don't need to skip rows. Um, but the one thing we do need to make a uh, point of keeping in mind is the island bypass mode because initially the centre of this field, course play is still going to recognise as an island. So if we if we were to uh, if we were to keep that on it on its default setting there of circle, it's going to recognise that centre of the circle and it's going to essentially plot a course just in the row that we've created around this uh, this outer edge. So we want to click on no, make sure no bypass is selected there. And then we want so that the course will plot through this ground and then click on generate field work course. There we go. So as you can see, the whole area has now been plotted. So we can come out of here. There we go. Now we want to make sure that we still have allow create fields on so that the course play worker can create that center section into a field. We want to highlight first waypoint. Now we are just, for the sake of doing it fully, I'm just going to start the course from the first waypoint. Let's bring up all the uh, all the heads, all the, the waypoints there. Essentially, just click on go. So they are going to run round. They may well take out another inch or so of ground around the very outer edge there which is fine but yeah so I shall pick you all back up in a matter of minutes or 16 minutes to be precise when this job is done Okay, so this job is almost done. We're just going to wait for it to, uh, to turn around and finish off the, la the last tiny little uh, strip that uh, it's got left to do here. But it has done an admirable job. We now have a perfect area of uh, arable land now. Perfect field. It hasn't missed any bits. And that was just using the default settings of the course plotting section with a nice small 4 metre subsoiler. So yeah, not long now. A couple of seconds left. But it is really straightforward, wouldn't you say? Really easy to do. So, when this is finished, I am now going to show you how to save a course. Now, I can I can do this on any map with any course, but for the purposes of this, because the course that we're currently running is a temporary course, I may as well do it with this one, because the principle stands the same regardless. So, right, all finished. Could have lifted the tool up for us. <laughs> right there we go okay so bringing up the heads up display again this is a temporary course 
So we want to jump into the course manager section of course play. Now, first and foremost, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a folder to, to save the courses in. Now, again, this whole system, in personally, I feel that the whole course manager saving system isn't how you organize it and how you lay it out and how you file it away, essentially, is entirely down to how, you know, each of our indiv individual minds prefer to store things and organize things in different ways so this is entirely down to you you could have for example you could have just one folder that contains all of the courses that you have for your map in um you could have like i do i create a folder for each field on a map so obviously on this map we've only got one field at the minute but you know if you're on uh i don't know court farms for example your farm has 10 fields and they're fields one to ten i would have 10 folders there on the left hand side field one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and within each of those folders, I would store each of my individual course play courses that correspond to each of my individual uh, implements, tools, machines. So I'm going to do just that now. So I'm going to create a new folder in the bottom of the screen. Yeah, it tells me to press on my PlayStation pad. It's R. So yeah, I'm going to create a folder, and again, very imaginatively, I'm going to call it Field One. So that's now brought up the folder there. Now. Within that course, that folder, sorry, we are now going to save the course that we are that we currently have loaded into the tractor, the temporary course. So, save course, click that, click on activate, and it's now telling us to input the name that we would like to give to this course. Now, I'm just going to jump back out again, sorry. This is a four meter subsoiler. For all intents and purposes, a four meter course is a four meter course, whether you're using a subsoiler, a cultivator a cedar whatever it doesn't matter a four meter course is a four meter course in this case obviously in this with this particular course we've plotted the headlands come first and then it runs the up and down roads so if you're happy for that layout for that behavior for all of your other implements as i said a four meter course is a four meter course so you can just save it as a four meter course again personally what i do is i save each course individually to the name of the implement that we're using so in this case this is a what is it this is a a coon dc 401 subsoiler so that's what i would call it a DC, the, because it's a tool that i have on my farm it's the subsoiler that i would be using every time i needed a subsoiler so that's how i how i would label it but again as i said it's in the this section is entirely down to yourselves how you'd like to file away your uh your course plays you could just call it four meter course and use that same course for all of your other implements assuming that they are all four meters wide so anyway yeah that's that so we're going to save the course activate this uh again for simplicity i'm just going to call this a four meter subsoiler there we go click on okay and when we jump back into the game and the course play heads up display there now the temporary course label has gone and it is now called a four meter subsoiler so you are now free to go if it, so you could essentially now you can unload this course get rid of it again you're free to go off and do whatever you need to do with this if you if you wanted to come back to this field and run the subsoiler again you can quite simply go into the the course play manager thing highlight the course that you want to load up click on load course click on activate and boom there you go it's back in the brain of the vehicle you're in and free to uh, free to run it again so yeah that's essentially in a nutshell how to create a custom course very straightforward i hope you'll agree um how to save that course so you can come back to it again in the future um and as i said i'll leave it down to your uh, personal discretion how you uh, how you like to file things away but yeah it's 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 really easy to do really easy so that's essentially that section of uh, of this course play guide i will now jump maps into into a new place and i'm going to show you how to run multiple machines so see you in a second okay so for the purposes of this vast demonstration i have chosen the wonderful huron county michigan map by mi axman it is a 16 times map, so I believe that makes it 8 kilometers by 8 kilometers. So it is a vast area of land, this map. It really is. Um, 
I can say that in the early days when this map was first released, it was quite a while ago, actually. Um, I have tried to, so I say tried, I've soloed this map. I've done a lot of work on here, made my own auto drive network, and uh, yeah, spent a lot of time with stuff like this, multiple machines. Um, the particular field I've chosen, if I pop into the map PDA very quickly, as you can see, it's a whopper, it really is. But almost slap bang in the middle, we have field 160, which is... I think if I bring up the heads-up display, it says it has a field area of 609.1 acres. Uh, and based on the size of the map, I think it makes it a 1.6 kilometre square field. So it's 1.6 kilometres either edge. <laughs> so it's a big one. Perfect for demonstrating multiple machines. Right, so first things first. I've chosen my one of my favourite harvesters in the game. This is the Klaas Lexian uh, Caterpillar branded harvester. This particular mod is by SIID Modding. And of course, standard procedure, I feel we have custom moddings, Honeybee Airflex headers. These are the 250 variants, so they are 15.2 metres wide each, I think, if I remember correctly. So... Running multiple machines, what do we need to know? First and foremost, and again, this is my own speaking from my own personal experience, the first thing you need to do before you set up any courses, especially in this instance, is make sure that the settings for each vehicle are the same. So if we jump into, uh, this is combine number one, as you can see, this, this harvester, this mod allows you to place numbers on the machine. So we have number one, two, three, four, and five so we can clearly identify which one's which. So we're going to start everything off from number one. But as I say, when it comes to running multiple machines, especially when you're running five things like this, um, but I believe the principle should still say the same, make sure that the settings for each vehicle are identical. So if we pop into the, the course play settings in particular, so down here, combine settings, make sure that these sections here are all the same. So I've told each harvester will stop be unloaded self unload is deactivated headland unloading is completely deactivated and for the purposes of uh, being neat and tidy i've deactivated the straw swaths as well but obviously you know that's entirely down to your preference and what you're doing now combine self unload doesn't necessarily need to be deactivated uh, if you're running two combines in a field and it's uh, you know it's not too big you can have that running but for the purposes of having running five combines in such a big field the last thing you really want is to have each combine individually trying to find its own way to a trailer at the side of the field um, because it will get messy. <laughs> um, actually, so forgive me, I'll uh, turn that off and out. Hit the button by accident. Yeah, you don't you don't want five combines trying to find their own way to the side of a field to a to a, a grain cart or a lorry or a, you know a truck or anything like that because it will end in tears. I feel. Ask me how I know. <laughs> right, so. Firstly, once you've established that all the vehicles that you are using, whether it's two, three, four, or five, five being the maximum that course play can run at a time, once you've established that they're all the settings have been set to how you want them and they are now all the same, it is now time to plot a course. So, again, like I said, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to start with combine number one. Now, what you do need to do, this does you will need to save the course because when you've created the course initially, you are then going to need to load that same course up into each of the other vehicles that you're running. So, and in order to do that, you need to have the course saved. So, in this case, using combine number one, we're going to jump into the menus, go straight obviously to the, the uh, workers menu. We're going to create a job, course play field work. Now, for, even though I'm parked right on the very edge of the field, uh, it, obviously I'm not in the field at the minute, so we're going to uh, target position there, field position there, and as you can see, course play has defined the, the very vast area of this field with its white line. So now we go to open close course generator. Okay, so work width 15.2 meters, yep. Multiple tools, five, yes. Now, we're only going to run one headland on this because that one headland is going to be the width of all five harvesters in one. So whatever whatever 15.2 times five is, that's going to be the width of 
the entire headland. So we can afford, in this case, and knowing that the, this particular field has nothing to bump into whatsoever around the outside, we're just going to run one headland. Obviously, we're harvesting, so we're going to start with headlands. The field is perfectly square with perfect right angles in each corner, so we're going to run sharp corners. We're going to run clockwise. Again, that's just my preferred option. I always run clockwise. Now, we don't actually need to run anything of an over, really of an overlap because we have sharp corners. We're not going to miss anything in the corners because of the, uh, the characteristics of how course play deals with sharp corners. So we're going to we're going to leave that as the default at seven, just to be safe. We could probably afford to do that at zero, but just in case there's a, a discrepancy between the width of the header, etc., we're just going to run it at its default seven percent. So we're going to run the centers up and down. Yep, we can leave the up and down row direction as automatic, um, having done this multiple times before, and with it being a perfectly square field, I know that when it plots the course, it plots the, the up and down rows, left to right, right to left in this case. We're going to run, we're going to skip one row just to allow the whole set of five combines to give it enough room to, to essentially turn between rows, essentially. Rows, but yeah, we don't need to do that. We don't need to touch anything else. There's no, uh, there's no islands in this in this field. And again, for the purposes of making sure that we get every little bit around the edge, we're going to pop that to a 0 0.4 field margin. So just to be safe, make sure that the every bit of crop around the edge has been harvested. So once you're happy with those settings, now obviously this the settings that you'll be putting into your maps as you do it, that will be entirely dependent on the shape and characteristics of the field that you're in. As I said before, for the purposes of this demonstration, with it being a big one um, and it being perfectly square, these are the settings I want. So once you're happy, generate the field work course. Now I know that this does take, because it's a very big field and it's doing it for five combines, it will take a good few seconds to uh, plot the course. But there we go, all done. So, as you can see, we've got the course plotted. Now, the center line, the blue line here, each row, that essentially sits in the center of the whole thing. So, if we if we jump out to the vehicle here, there we go. Let's bring up the visible waypoints screen. There we go. So, if I jump into construction mode very quickly just to show you, that line there, as you can see from the width, that line there is the center of the course. So because we have five combine harvesters, and with it being an odd number of harvesters, the middle harvester will run this that will, will follow that direct line. And the, the, then there'll be one, there'll be two to the left and two to the right. And that's how pretty much how it's plotted it across the whole field, of course. Right. So now, there's a couple more things to bear in mind here when you're running multiple machines. In the heads-up display here, as you can see, we have left two. If we click it, left one, center, right one, and right two. Now, obviously, that is regarding the positioning of each of the five machines. Because we have plotted this course for five machines, we have one in the middle, we have two to the right and two to the left. And I, I like to work, I'm gonna work numerically from left to right. So combine number one will be running left two, which is the furthest most left. Left one will be to the right of this one. And then you've got the center and then to the right again and farthest right, if that makes any sense. So this will be running left two. Now we need to save the course first so that we can load this course into all the other four combines. So we go into here, we're going to create a new folder. And it's done it again, hasn't it? For some reason, we need to go back into it. We need to save course. Yes, why does it do this when I'm trying to demonstrate it? So create new folder. Yes, finally, it worked. Okay, so field 160. There we go. Now. We want to save the course in here. So save course, activate. And it's doing it again to me, isn't it? When it does do this, if it does do this for you, you just need to drop out and go back in again. 
save course, activate. There we go. Okay, so we're going to, for the purposes of simplicity, I'm just going to call this a 15.2 meter harvest times five. There we go. Okay, finally. <laughs> Forgive me, viewers. Okay, so 15.2 meter harvest times five. This one is going to be running left two. We then jump to combine number two. We know that the settings are correct inside the, co the combine harvester settings for course play. So we now highlight this course, load course, activate. There we go. At least that worked. That's worked for me. Okay. Now it does take a bit of time to get set up this. I appreciate that, but it's worth it. So obviously we need to make sure that everything starts at the same point. So we're going to be starting from the first waypoint. We've hi we've highlighted this course. We've loaded that up. This harvester number two is going to be running left one, which is essentially in the position they're in now, if that makes any sense. So number one, far left, number two, inner left, number three here in the center, and four and five, right one and right two. Okay, so we're happy with that there. Now, combine number three, we're going to load up the course. There we are, load course, activate. Yep, again, make sure first waypoint is selected and this one is going to be running in the center. Same again here, load course. There we go, load course. First waypoint. I've just noticed it's saying their work width 15.4 meters. I don't actually understand why that has said that because we've defined the uh, course as being 15.2 meters. Let's just load up number five as well. Load course, activate, yep. First waypoint. Now this is going to be right two, but we can just amend that so there, you can see there, you can manually amend it up and down. So it should be 15.2 meters. So this is number five. Let's just check they all have the same. Number four, 15.2. Number three, 15.2. Number one, 15.2. And you see number one was set to 15.2 for some reason, so I haven't had to alter that. Just the odd little thing here to keep an eye on when it comes to running multiple machines. So all of our machines are now loaded up with the course we want. One, two, three, four, and five. All starting from the first waypoint and all have the relevant uh, row running. Right two, right one, center, left one, and left two. Okay, so now that we have the course loaded up into each of the vehicles there is something else that we need to now take into consideration going back into the menus there's a, there's another option now that is there that wasn't there before as a result of us loading up a multiple machined course so into the vehicle settings again scrolling down where are we there we go yeah multi-tool settings this is what we've had before the combine settings the one we've focused on we now have this setting here, multi-tool settings, which only appears as a result of activating a multiple-tooled course. So we've got two options, symmetric lane change and convoy distance. Now, personally, I've never had to alter the or mess around with a symmetric lane change uh, setting here. I've always just left that as deactivated, and for all intents and purposes, things have worked relatively well. The convoy distance, however, is something that I have played around with. Having run quite a few courses and fields over the over the last couple of years running various amounts of multiple tools and I, I know speaking from experience 75 meters i feel isn't quite enough i have always preferred to i'm, I'm preferred to increase that to something like in this case about 120 meters and you need to do that for each individual vehicle in this case to make sure that all the settings are identical and that they keep an equal equal distance away from each other so Essentially, the purposes of doing this are to, to allow each of the vehicles as they come to an end of a row, as they come to a sharp corner and need to stop and reverse and turn around and this, that and the other, that 120 metres 
just allows as much room as possible for each of those vehicles to to stop and turn around and do what they need to do because there has been i have experienced it multiple times where regardless of how well you've got it set each individual vehicle has got exactly the same settings but now and again because each harvester will eventually especially on a large field like this each harvester will start to stop and need emptying and stuff at different times course play will do its absolute best to keep that convoy distance as perfect as possible but there is there is always room for error so i hope i'm making sense with that forgive me if i'm waffling nonsense but essentially i'm going to increase that to 120 so 120 press enter tickety boo jump into each individual vehicle change the distance to whatever you feel it needs to be set to if you're running in smaller fields and you're only running for example two machines whether it's a harvester or a planter or anything like that you can probably afford to keep that at 75 meters but for the purposes of this demonstration where we're in a very big field running five combine harvesters the last thing we want is for the harvesters to bump into each other get tied in knots and essentially like i like i've i've returned to my computer after leaving the leaving the harvesters going uh to find them essentially tied in knots in the middle of a field trying to mate with each other so um you come back to the computer expecting expecting them to be almost done and they're not even halfway because they've been sat stuck tied in knots and not doing anything so we're going to change all five to 120 meters hopefully i'm not going to eat my words here because this is a big field now i did um just for numbers sake just so you can get a even the the slightest of ideas how big this field is i uh i bought before setting up this video i put one of the combines into the field and i set up a single combine course and the time it took the time it said it was going to be taken to complete the, the 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 time that appears in the in the course play hood here when you set it off it was 17 hours and 29 minutes that's how long it would take one harvester to harvest this field and that's not taking into consideration stopping time stopping to unload or anything if it had a if it had a mary poppins hopper on it and it would just you know carry on harvesting the whole field in one go according to course play 17 hours and 29 minutes which is ridiculous so we're going to see how long it's going to take five of them to do that. Technically, that's 17 hours divided by five, whatever that might be. So anyway, right. So we're now confident that all of our five machines are set exactly the same. We've got uh, we've got each individual combine set to its uh, relevant row. Left one, left two, center, right one, right two. Once you're happy with that, uh, now I did try my best to bring the start, but the start, but that's the start point there. You can see in the distance there. I did that, try my very best to bring it as close to here as possible, but just due to the size of the map um, and how accurate you can be pinpointing stuff on the PDA, um, I bought it as what I felt was as close to this edge as possible, and that's as, as close as I got. So I was obviously way off. Um, so anyway, right. Expect a lag spike here when I click the play button. So we're happy that everything's up and running. So click on play. Oh, that wasn't much of a lag spike. I was expecting it to freeze up for a second. So you click on play on combine number one. This hopefully is going to be the one leading the pack initially. So he's going to make his way to the start point. Now I have always found as well that it's important just to let, just to give each machine a few seconds of time ahead of each other just so they can get started and not tie themselves in knots again and, not, and reduce the chances that they're going to bump into each other. So Combine 1 is off on his way. Combine 2. To be honest, I think that's him waiting for the... There you go. That's obviously 120 metres. Combine 3. Click on play. We'll give the Combine 2 again a few seconds of time. There we go. He's off. He's finding his way. Combine four. Same again. Just give combine three a few seconds to get ahead. There you go. And 
last but not least, Combine 5. There we go, that's the lag. You see that I pressed the button. You can see how everything's just frozen for a few seconds. There we go. That doesn't happen all the time. That's characteristic of the fact that this is a very, very big field so, and a big course. So, let's... Four, three, two, one. So, combine number one is well on his way. Combine number two is keeping his distance. As you can see there, combine number three. Now this is a see. Now this is where we have a problem already. I'm glad. I'm, I'm kind of glad it's actually doing it. But combine number three here, which should be in the centre, hasn't set off on his way. Combine number four, which we're going to stop here. And combine number five, we're going to stop. Now this is a prime example of why I tried my very best to give each individual vehicle a little bit of time ahead of each other. So we're just going to shift combine number four just out the way a tiny bit, just so the headers don't bump into each other. There we go, right. So now, if I click on play on this one now, it should lower its... No, actually no, I need to now change that to nearest waypoint. It should now drop the header and wait until combine number three has got to that 120 metre distance. That's a prime example there of why I feel it is vital to increase that distance. Primarily because course play can still do funny things now and again. So this should still work from first waypoint because it hasn't hit first waypoint yet so if I click on, let's just make sure actually, yeah first waypoint's there if I click on play it's going to drop down hopefully drop down and he should see you now he hasn't done that, oh no there we go I eat my hot, yeah he's now come to a stop because he is now waiting for that 120 metre gap to be apparent so that he will let there you go you can see slowly starting to edge forward it's like he's being a bit impatient isn't it <laughs> so he's now off on his way slowly but surely so let's this is number four number three number two and number one Right, so this has now said we have 3 hours and 52 minutes as opposed to that horrific 17 hours that it would have taken one combine to do. So yeah, that's essentially, in a nutshell, how to run multiple combines, multiple machines. Now the principle stays the same whether you're running a combine harvester or you're running a, you know, a planter, a plough, or multiple of the same principle stays the same personally the things to focus on are making sure that each of the machines that you're running have exactly the same settings and that's that's a setting that needs to be down to your preference and how you want the machines to behave in the field and also the convoy distance that's imperative in my personal opinion the convoy distance has to be set right but you do still have to keep your eye on them they can be a bit wayward, as as example there, by combine number four, jumping ahead of combine number three, when it should have recognised that combine number three hadn't made its way, hadn't started yet. So it should have waited, but it didn't. Don't know how, don't know why. You saw I'd set the settings correctly. What can I say? Welcome to course play. <laughs> 99.9% .9 of the time it works perfectly obviously this is adding a lot of uh, complications into the matter by running five five machines but I felt this was a great uh, a great way of showing it to you as it, as it were so we shall pick these guys back up in a few more minutes when it gets to a corner first corner here coming up now I am going to manually empty them obviously I'm not running grain cart here so essentially what I can do, I'm just going to, so that they don't stop and wait for, wait to be unloaded. Essentially I can just 
I can just go into the uh, the visual, the, the easy dev here, empty the machine, there we go, and it will just keep going. Do the same with that one, empty, same with that one, empty, and that one, empty, and this one, empty. And now we're back at number one. So yeah, I'll pick you all back up in a few seconds and we'll just watch them go through the first corner. And hopefully, they'll behave themselves. Right, approaching the first corner now. Now we're going to jump into combine number two. Because combine number one is obviously the first to hit the corner, so that should now perform its manoeuvre in the corner. And hopefully all going to plan, combine number two should recognise that 120 metre gap there you go, you can see its speed is already decreasing, four miles an hour three that's now trying to control that 120 metre gap we go to number three forgive the lag spike there horseplay does that because it's thinking a lot. There you go, so combine number three is now slowing down. Let's just jump back to combine number two. Combine number one should now be, as soon as it's finished its reversing manoeuvre here, should swing right and carry on up the headland up that in that direction. Frustratedly, it's missed that bit on the corner there. Come on, number one. There you go. Okay. So that's that. So now combine number two will perform his sharp headland manoeuvre. Three is slowing down nicely. As is number four. And hopefully it should be number five. Yes. So let's jump back to three. Number one's on its way nicely. On number two. But thankfully they are now, it seems to be, they are now recognising properly the the convoy distance and sticking to it essentially. Right, so number two's cutting its way into there. The standard procedure for a sharp corner for whether it's one, two, three, four, or five harvesters. Now, obviously, this, the characteristics of what they do on a headland here are entirely different. Obviously, a, 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 a plough, a, a cedar, a cultivator, that doesn't do that. This is, this is an entirely unique uh, characteristic for the, just for the harvesters. So he should now crack on with the second length of headland. Excellent stuff. So number four should be doing the same. There we go. so that's slowing right down to two miles an hour. They don't necessarily come to a, an absolute standstill. They will come to a standstill when a combine, what they should do, I say that. They will come to a standstill when, for example, the combine in front stops and sticks its auger pipe out to be unloaded. Then they will come to a standstill, or they should do. Again, I have experienced it before where you've set your convoy distance to whatever you want it to be, and the, com the, the combine in front will stick its auger pipe out and wait to, to be unloaded and the combine behind, instead of sticking to the convoy distance, will just mosey on forward and just crack on. Which is, you know, it can be a bit frustrating because they will bump into the... the, uh, the headers might bump into each other. And it, yeah, it just gets a bit annoying. And it ruins the, uh, the ballet of it all. But thankfully now we have had one hiccup obviously at the very beginning combine number four being a bit naughty i think it was or was it number three i can't remember but now it would seem everything's working there we go so let's jump back to number one see he's now about to let, let's just see what happens here for your own demonstration purposes he's coming to a stop Hopefully, 
In fact, he's actually going to uh, he's actually going to pull into the the row on his right, isn't he? There we go. So he's going to pull in there. Combine number two. Good. In fact, he's going to hit needing them team as well in any, any minute now, in a second now. But he should still slow down. There we go, coming to a stop. Coming to a stop. Yeah, I think they're all going to hit similar. Uh, fill point. Three's what he's at 86, number four's at 77, and number five's at 81, interestingly. But they're still behaving themselves. Right. So there we go. Number one has come to a stop, put his auger pipe out, as has number two. Number three's not quite there yet. But they should. He's on his way there. There we go. And number five is coming right down to a, or was creeping at, to a speed there, because he realises that he's too close to number number four. Okay. So, and then we can see there number three is at ninety-seven percent. It's kind of what's kind of what's going to come first. Is it going to be the 98, 99% on load level? There we go, 98. There we go. He's come to a stop. How many is he's putting his pipe out? Okay. So I think yeah, they're all going to do pretty much do the same there. So. At least there's a bit of uniformity to it all. For demonstration purposes, it has been almost successful. So there we go. Now I appreciate they haven't finished the field. There's several hours of work ahead of them to finish this field, so uh, I'm not necessarily going to going to wait for all that to happen. But essentially, you do need to keep on top of them. Now, this is a an ideal opportunity now for to have auto drive running as well which is how I used to run it in the past running five harvesters you can have two three four uh, tractors and grain carts running at the same time they are quite clever at avoiding themselves and not bumping into each other but essentially we would now have if you have auto drive running that would be doing its thing now emptying these things or obviously you can do it yourself if you had a tractor and a trailer or multiple you'd be running and emptying each one individually and as soon as you emptied it it would then pick up where it left off and just crack on as course as course play would ordinarily do so but obviously yeah auto drive is something we're going to essentially that could be in the next episode actually we're going to start because i think now now that we've done this now that i've demonstrated this multiple machine part of course play that's pretty much in my mind the ps de resistance of course play you can run obviously run it with a small machine any kind of machine in any field but running the big stuff and multiple machines is kind of it's uh as i say it's ps de resistance it's the look at that there all five combines waiting to be unloaded so yeah right i'm gonna say that that's pretty much that for that demonstration the principles stay the same as i said before um, now please forgive me everyone if i'm if i've repeated myself on multiple occasions i am sorry i'm you know i, I don't i've not i've not got this written down this isn't i'm not working off a script i'm just trying my very best to remember things and bring pointers to you as, as i remember them um but yeah the principles stay the same whether you're running f five or, or up to five implements plows cultivators cedars you name it you can run anything multiple times in a field. As I said before, I have chosen this massive field and five massive combines to demonstrate the multiple machines of course play. Um, so yeah, uh, that's essentially how you set them up. As I said before, the primary things to remember, whether you're running a harvester, a cultivator, a plough, whatever, the main point.
points to remember in my personal experience are to make sure that the settings are exactly the same for each vehicle that you're using obviously make sure that the tools that you're using are that now they don't have to be identical we don't have to necessarily have five identical honeybee headers on these harvesters as long as the width of the harvesting header is exactly the same or again the principle stays the same if the width of the implements that you're running is exactly the same they don't have to be identical things it just looks cool when they're all when they all look the same <laughs> um but yeah so make sure that the settings are all the same make sure that the implement widths are all the same and obviously when it comes to running three four five multiple machines in a field make sure that the convoy distance you've got is set to the same and that the convoy distance is big enough to allow turning space space for mistakes etc etc just to give each individual machine that room to maneuver essentially so i think i'm going to call it here for that one um i'm pretty sure i've covered what i believe to be the 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 main pointers of running multiple machines and obviously you know previously in the video i've showed you how to run how to create a custom field how to save the fields how to save the courses um yeah i can't think there's much more i can uh, i can think of on uh, at the minute i suppose so the next video um i think i'm go now going to to touch our on to auto drive that's going to be the next uh, the next course of action we're gonna we're gonna run a few um a few tutorial videos on getting auto drive set up um starting with the basics of course and then working its way up because auto drive is a quite a complicated one if i'm honest um but then working the way up we'll do a couple of auto drive tutorials maybe two or three i don't know i've not i haven't given it any thought whatsoever yet but we'll have we'll have a couple of auto drive tutorials and then finishing off with combining course play and auto drive to work together because when when they do work together and when they work it's utter magic it really is so thank you very much for watching everyone uh, i really hope you found this video um informative and interesting and in hopefully even the remotest bit helpful uh forgive me that i'm a bit of a waffler i know i can gabble on a bit so please forgive me there that's just me i'm afraid um i have tried to think of the the important points to bring to you to, so that if you are new to course play um hopefully over the, the course of the last three videos you'll have had a, a good understanding of how to start run basic courses how to fine tune those courses using the expert settings and now in this one how to run multiple machines so thanks for your time for watching the video everyone i really hope you've enjoyed it and found it as i say even remotely interesting and helpful so i shall see you in the next video.